Hello and welcome to MT3 again and um, this time in this tutorial we'll be looking at operations on matrices. We are now on Riley Hobson and Benz 8.6 all the way to 8.9. I won't cover everything in these sections over here but I will set you a lot of reading material particularly from 8.9 which is on determinants and you you've kind of seen it before. Alright so the first of these operations is the transpose. The transpose of a matrix A is denoted by A superscript capital T. The next is the Hermitian conjugate, which you will see typeset in this way. Now I can't draw a dagger precisely. I will write it like this. It looks like a lowercase t, but it's not. It's a dagger. So A to the uh, A daggered is the Hermitian conjugate. We'll define these. Now the dagger is not the transpose. All right, so please don't confuse the two. Uh, then we have the trace of a matrix, which again I think you've seen before, and finally the determinant. All right, let's let's begin with the transpose. Now, a short way of saying transpose, or in English, is to say interchange the rows and columns, or mathematically, uh, the i j -th element of the transpose of A is equal to the j i -th element of A. We've interchanged the rows and columns. So let's use let's prove uh, one result, and then I'll ask you to try out another one on your own. So we're going to show that the transpose of A times B is equal to the transpose of B times the transpose of A. Now as I've said before in a, in a previous tutorial, when you're asked to show a relation like this, show that the ij element of the left-hand side is equal to the ij element on the right-hand side. And as there's no restriction on i and j, therefore we must have these two sides being equal. So start with the left-hand side. LHS, that's the IJ element of A, B, transpose. Now notice my use of brackets. I haven't, I, I've deliberately put this square bracket in there to remind myself that I first want to multiply A and B, then transpose the result. I get a matrix and then I want the IJ element of that matrix. So these brackets are telling me perform the operations in a certain order. All right. I mean, uh, and I find them quite important when I'm uh, writing down a proof. If I skip brackets by being a little lazy, it's easy to make a mistake. So here we want the ij element of this matrix, which is transposed. And uh, now I use the definition of transpose. Transpose means I interchange the rows and columns. So, well, so this is equal to, by definition, this is equal to the Now I can drop this to the product of A and B. I've applied the transpose. The transpose interchanges I and J, so we have J I. So multiply A and B and take the J I -th element of that. Okay, that's fine. I know how to do that. I use the definition of the matrix multiplication. I will get the sum over K, and uh, this gives us A, oops, A J K, B K I. K is the inner index which is summed. Okay, that's the left hand side. Then we'll go to the right hand side. Um, the right hand side is uh, the ijth element of B transpose A transpose. Now, all right, we know how to do that. In fact, what I should have done here was to put parentheses here to tell myself that I want to transpose this matrix, then multiply it by the other one. So let's do that. Well, that's equal to, uh, oh yes, I'm going to use the matrix multiplication. Let's go on the next line so I don't get too close to that thing there. The sum over k. And uh, now we have this matrix here, and I want the i kth element of that matrix. And then I have another matrix here, and I want the k jth element of that matrix. All right, now I can apply the transpose. The transpose, the i kth element of the transpose of B is the same as the k i -th element of B. So this then is equal to 
B K I and the same for A. The K J element of the transpose of A is the same as the J K element of A. Okay, now let's interchange these two positions. And hey, that's equal to the LHS. And therefore we have our result. All right. So to complete it, therefore, A, B, transpose is equal to B, transpose, A, transpose. That's it. OK, that's uh, one of the results I wanted to show you. Now the other one I'm going to leave to you, but I want to motivate it. And what I'd like you to show is that you can generalize that. How do you generalize it? Let's say I, I generalize it to three matrices. What can this equal? Well, I'm going to put down the result here. Oh, let, let's, let's work it off very quickly. Let's call D is equal to BC. So this is equal to A. D transpose, but hey, we know what this is. This must be D transpose, A transpose, but okay, D is equal to B C, so this is equal to B C transpose, A transpose, but I know what this is by the previous result. This is equal to C transpose, B transpose, A transpose. So guess what's happened here? When you transpose the product A, B, C, you get the product of the transposes of C with B with A. We've reversed. And uh, you know you can generalize this. Riley, Hobson, and Benz has uh, um, the generalization here. If we have any number of matrices and you take the transpose of the product of all of these, then you get the um, the reverse and you transpose each matrix in turn and then multiply them together in reverse all right so that's uh, the transpose then we come to 8.7 which is the Hermitian conjugate Now, I'm not sure if you've seen this thing before. Uh, the Hermitian conjugate of a matrix A is defined as by this dagger. So uh, let's use a red for that. Dagger. And the ijth element of this daggered matrix is equal to, I'm going to write it down, is equal to the jth element of A, like the transpose, except that there's one more operation needed, and that's the complex conjugation. So what we've got here is the dagger, the Hermitian conjugate, uh, is a joint operation. It's the complex conjugation and the transpose. So we can also write it as um, A transpose followed by complex conjugation IJ. Actually, we don't need these parentheses here. Yeah. It's two operations together. Now, um, I'm going to set this as an exercise now. So show, show that A, B, Hermitian conjugate is equal to B, Hermitian conjugate, A, Hermitian conjugate. And it's quite important to be able to show such a thing, so I'm going to box it. Please do it. 
Oops. And uh, it may not surprise you to know that the proof is ah the proof is not here, but you'll find it if you look. Now, uh, Riley is Riley talks you know actually shows you what the Hermitian conjugate uh, looks like of a matrix. So please please have a look at this. So here you can see that you've, uh, in in this example here, you've got a, a, a two by three matrix, two rows and three columns. When you take the Hermitian conjugate, the A dagger, you get three rows and two columns, and each um, term in this matrix has been complex conjugated. Now, I've seen people forget, students forget how to complex conjugate uh, each term when you take the uh, Hermitian adjoint. So you've got to remember these things, that it's the transpose followed by the complex conjugation of every term in the matrix. Okay. Um, now, this is something which you've seen before, and I'm just going to point it out here. Remember when we defined the um, the inner product, we had written something like this. And what I showed you then was that uh, the inner product could be written as a uh, sum i goes from 1 to n, a i star, b i. And I also showed you you could write it as the vector a dagger times b. Now what the, vet the vector a dagger was, was the Hermitian conjugate of a. So just to remind you what happens there, uh, a itself is a column vector, a1, a2, all the way to a n. Therefore, a dagger will be a row vector because we interchange the rows and columns, a1, a2, all the way to a n. But we have to follow it by the conjugation, so each term in here gets conjugated. And then when we define a dagger times b, we get this expression here. So that's where this comes in, yeah, I mean, the Hermitian adjoint. All right, so what's next? Next, we've got the, the trace. Now the trace is defined only for a square matrix. You'll see why. It's denoted by TR of A and it's defined as the sum of the diagonal terms AII. Now, if you if this was not a square matrix, then it wouldn't be possible to define the diagonal of A. For example, if you had A as a as one, two, three, four, five, six, or two by three matrix, then what is the diagonal of A? Is it this or is it that or you know what is? <laughs> in fact, if you wanted to draw a diagonal, it would go across that somewhere in the middle here. Uh, there is no diagonal of A d uh, defined uh, for. Uh, Okay, so let's get rid of all of that stuff. A must be square. Now there are a few simple results which we can prove for the trace of square matrices. If you have two square matrices of the same rank, and this is important, then you can define the trace of A plus or minus B, and here A and B must both be the same rank, so n by n, both. Otherwise, this can't be defined. You can't add or subtract them if they're not the same rank, the same dimension. Uh, and this is equal to the trace of A plus the trace of B. So how do we show that? Well, just evaluate it, uh, plus or minus, sorry. Uh, so the, le the left-hand side is going to be the sum over k going from 1 to n of a plus or minus b and the, uh, okay, I'd used i before, let's use i, 
the i i element of this. And that itself is equal to, now you know what the i i element of uh, a matrix is. It's the sum i goes from 1 to n of a i i plus b i i. This was the first of the matrix operation, the matrix algebra results we had shown. Okay, so that's equal to the sum i goes from 1 to n of a i i plus the sum i goes from 1 to n of b i i. Oh, by the way, if you have a, a deriving something and the sums go over the same limits, just put it somewhere. All sums go from 1 to n, and then you don't have to write 1 to n, 1 to n, 1 to n, you know, repeatedly. All right, but this now by definition is the trace of A and, uh, oh, I forgot the plus or minus here, trace of B. So that's the proof. Yeah. Any other proofs we need? Oh, yes, the trace, so this I'm going to leave for you. This is an important one. The trace of A times B is equal to the trace of B times A. And uh, this is quite an important one. So this is for you. But what I'd like to motivate here is let's just let's use this result to show the next result, which is that's the trace of A, B, C is the same as the trace of B, C, A, and it's the same as the trace of C, a, B. Now, how do you show something like that? Well, the idea is the same idea I have used now at least twice. Call one of these pairs D. Then this then becomes the trace of A with D. But we know from here that the trace of A with D is the same as the trace of D with A. But now we can put D back. D is equal to BC. So that's equal to the trace of BC with A. And that's the second term here. How do you get this one? Well, for this one, choose AB, the product AB to be D, and then you will get this here. So if you've understood what's happening in this particular part, then I'm putting. I'm going to pose a question for you. Uh, this question is as follows: What is is this true? Okay. Is this equal to the trace of A B? D, C. Oops. Control Z. Uh, think about it. Work it out mathematically. But uh, it's it's an interesting question. Okay. Now we come on to determinants. Now let's move to Riley's uh, book. Uh, he has the stuff about traces. Determinants. Now, determinants is something you have seen in either MT1 or MT2. I can't remember which one has it, but you've seen it before. So, this is now going to be uh, designated uh, reading, revision work for you. You've got to go over this uh, section 8.9 yourself. Remind yourself how the determinant is defined. How do you compute it? Uh, what a Laplace expansion is, all that stuff. Basically, you know how to. You should know how to compute uh, two by two determinants and three by three determinants. 
uh, quickly and flawlessly. It's, uh, now, what I'm, what's interesting for us are the properties of determinants, which are not proved in Riley's book. At least they, the proofs come in later, much later, and we don't need the proofs for this uh, course. But I want the properties here, so I'm going to just list them down because we're going to find them useful later. So let's make a note of some stuff over here. Determinants. Read RHB 8.9. Alright, so the, the main results which we are going to use here is that um, the determinant of the transpose of a matrix is equal to the determinant of, a mat of the matrix. Next. The determinant of the Hermitian conjugate I wonder if you can figure out what this is going to be. The determinant of the Hermitian conjugate of a matrix is equal, of course, to the determinant of the matrix complex conjugated and then transposed. And that's equal by the first result to the determinant of the complex conjugate of the matrix, which is, of course, equal to the complex conjugate of the determinant nice there. Then if you multiply every term in a matrix by a scalar lambda, well, think about it, what's going to happen? If every term is multiplied, then you will get, and if, uh, let me just write this down and I'll explain. So lambda here is a scalar and A is n by n. So but I forgot to say this. Determinant of a square matrix. Right. So you multiply every term in a, in a square matrix by lambda and you will pick out a lambda to the n outside. And it's lambda to the n times the determinant of the, origin, the original matrix. Here's an important one, the determinant of the product of two matrices is equal to the product of the determinant of the two. And uh, from here it follows that the determinant of any number of matrices, I'll take three here, is equal to the determinant of each one in turn. And you use the same idea of introducing a third matrix D, which is the defined to be the product of two of them. Okay. And there's one more thing and then we are done. It's the inverse. Now, once again, like the determinant, you have seen the inverse before, so I'm not going to uh, spend much time on it. The inverse of a square matrix. Okay, that's the last topic for this tutorial. And uh, this is now in Riley, Hobson, and Benz in the very next section after the determinant because you need the determinant to get to the inverse. Let's see, here we are, 8.10. Um, and uh, all I want to say here is that the basic definition, so this is the possibly the most important part, A inverse exists only if the determinant of A is not equal to zero. If the determinant of A is zero, you're not going to get an, in an inverse. Okay, so some basic results again. 
the inverse of the inverse is the original matrix. I try and show it. Uh, sorry, I didn't say how the inverse was defined. The inverse is defined as follows. The inverse of a matrix times the matrix gives us the identity as does A times the inverse of A. Alright, so show that the inverse of the inverse is the identity. What else can you show? You can also show this. The inverse of the transpose of a matrix is equal to the transpose of the inverse. Show it. I wonder if you can guess what's coming next. The inverse of the Hermitian conjugate of a matrix is equal to the Hermitian conjugate of the inverse matrix. Show this. And finally, the inverse of the product of two matrices is equal to the inverse of the first times the inverse of the second. Show all of these. The proofs are simple and you'll find the proofs in Riley, Hobson and Benz. Eight point one zero. Try them yourself before going and looking at eight point one zero. And uh, we'll stop here. So we have now covered Riley, Hobson and Benz eight point six all the way to eight point one zero. I've given you a lot of self uh, reading because you have seen the material in 8.9 and 8.10 before. Uh, we don't need the proofs of the inverse, but we need, so you don't need uh, the proofs of various, uh, of the, uh, the results for the determinant, but I need some of, I need the results themselves. And uh, you need to know how to handle the inverse of a matrix, but in this course, I'm going to simply assume that uh, you know how to, in principle, get the inverse. What's more important for this course are the results like the ones I have listed at the end on the inverse and the determinants. Okay, so we'll stop here. Thanks for watching.